me again back with another video uh today we're going to be doing all about base um foundation contouring highlighting uh, so be prepared for another long video i know the last one was like 40 minutes but um this one might be even longer because there's a lot of stuff to go through um and i hope you don't mind it being quite long because you know um there is so much to fit in and i don't want to miss anything i don't want to miss any steps because it does make a massive difference including everything um that i'm going to tell you about today so let's just get straight on with it save some time so the first step as you can see today before i say anything else i've already got my eyes done i've already got my brows done i've already got my lips done just so it's a lot quicker to um give you the finished look at the end of it all so you get a better idea because oftentimes if you just put foundation on i mean i'm sure you all know when you look in the mirror and you've just put your foundation on you just look dead don't you just pale um and your whole kind of like features just blend into your face so uh yes yeah, so I, I thought i'd get everything done first um but i haven't whilst i have put concealer on to do my eyes it only comes sort of down to about here so i haven't put any primer on or anything like that yet uh, that's everything that we're going to cover in today's video um so first step in every every good base uh, is priming and um priming can often include moisturizing or you can just skip the moisturizing step and just use a really good primer that acts as a moisturizer or you can use both you can use as many primers as you want um if they all if they're all sort of good for different things and you've got multiple skin complaints so don't be afraid to you know pile them on try not to put too many on that are going to leave you an oily finish though because you know that's not going to do you make up any favors for sticking uh, so i'll just speak to you a little bit about the ones that i'm using the most at the moment um as you all know, if you've been to me before, you know what my favourite is, you know what I'm going to say, right? It's the Nivea Post Shave Balm. I'm absolutely in love with this stuff. It works so well. And I think I originally picked it up from uh, Nikki Tutorials because she said she'd stayed over at, at her boyfriend's house and she'd forgotten a primer or moisturiser or whatnot. And this was all he had. And she used that and said that her makeup just lasted so much longer than it normally does. So I picked that up and I went and bought myself some. It's like less than a fiver from Super Drug Boots, so it's easy to get hold of. It comes in an absolutely huge bottle. This is 100 mils. It lasts for quite a while, even the rate that I go through it. Basically, the Post Shave Balm contains what it must contain is a, a significantly large amount of glycerin because glycerin is just like sugar it's sticky so your makeup is going to stick to your face if you use this and trust me it does i often get sent photos of people that are waking up the next day after a night out they've had the makeup done at one o'clock in the afternoon they've uh, gone out taken a photo the next morning sent it me and the foundation's still flawless so i love this this is my sticky primer but I do like to prep my skin beforehand and one that I've recently acquired, um, I joined a Facebook group and there were some girls recommending it on there, it's the, and it's a French name so it's particularly difficult to pronounce so forgive me if I get it wrong, it's the Embryo Lease, I think that's right, Embryo Lease uh, Moisturiser and it's it kind of smells a little bit like um, I don't know if you guys have ever used aqueous cream, like for eczema, but it kind of smells a little bit like that. It's quite weird, but it works. It works really well. And if you like a dewy finish for your foundation like I do, then you'll find that this is the thing to give you that dewy finish. It's fantastic. I've used it quite a few times now since I've bought it and I am in love with it already. So that and the Nivea Post Shave Balm combined um, really do the trick for me. There is one more thing that I like to use and I like to use it first thing in the morning and last thing at night because it's it's helped brighten my skin up no end. Um, it's the, again, a funny name that I have no idea if I'm pronouncing correctly. It's the Ole Henriksen, I think it's Ole, Ole, Ole Henriksen Truth Series and this is the Seabridge Brighten Gel Cream and it came in a set with the Banana Bright Eye Cream. That the banana bright eye cream was initially the reason that I bought it um, because the eye cream has some sort of yellow pigment in it and yellow is the um, is the colour that helps lift 
dark circles so if you struggle with them like i do this is fantastic i'm not going to use it today because i've already like i say set under my eyes and things um but it, it does make a huge difference and if you're not wearing any foundation you just want to have a day off and you're going natural then you know you suffer with dark circles like i do like a bit of a raccoon um the banana bright eye cream and the um gel cream because they contain a lot of vitamin c they are brightening so your skin doesn't look tired and nice little bit of very very minuscule amount of coverage from the yellow pigment in the eye cream but it, it you can tell a difference and it's got reflective pigments in it as well so brightens everything up anyway and it's about that um we'll just go through everything else as we go along um tools let's just quickly talk about that so um the brush that i'm going to be applying my foundation with is the zoeva 105 lux highlight brush and i love it because these bristles really help get into your pores to blend foundation in but uh, that's not the only thing that i use to apply it i also use the trusty beauty blender and this one is a jeffree star one that i bought um in a pack because it came with the super little one um, which is great for going underneath the eyes but any old beauty blender will do the dirt cheap you can buy huge packs of them from primark i think so um beauty blender and then the 105 highlight brush they're my uh, favorite tools for laying a foundation at the moment and uh, when i prime other people's faces i'll use a brush as well to pop the primer on but you guys don't have to do that and i'm not going to do that today i'm just going to go in with my fingers to get this primer on so um, I'm going to start with the Embryolisse Moisturiser and I like to use quite a bit of it, um, mostly because my skin's quite dry, but the fact that it works so well, that it looks so nice under your makeup, I mean, that's just enough to want to, you know, to use quite a bit of it. Um, so I'm just going to rub that in. I'm going to try and avoid my eyes and my lips because I've already done them. Knowing me, it'll just go terribly wrong and I'll end up having to redo them anyway. But that's another story. And I'm sure I shall edit that bit out this video. <laughs> so uh, you guys don't have to watch that and I don't have to feel embarrassed about the mess that I've made of my face. Pat it in. Apparently, you're supposed to pat your face anyway with your moisturiser or whatever it is that you're using. I don't and I doubt many people do. You just rub it in, don't you? Um, I don't know why I'm supposed to do it like that. But still. Right, and onto the post-shave balm. And I kind of take just about that much. Rub it in. Fingers and then onto the skin. Oh, and it just smells like guys, which is <laughs> nice. I mean, I don't know whether you want to smell like a dude, but I like it. It reminds me of my husband, which is nice i think he gets quite sick of me constantly pinching his post shave balm as well if i run out and i haven't got any i'll go into the bathroom and steal his off the side and then he'll shout me like where's that gone and then i'll see him sneak into my workroom and he'll be in there putting my post shave balm on oh well sharing's caring right so once we've got that nicely we'll get i'm going to pat my face again Oh, I think the patting actually brings the blood to the surface, which plumps your skin up. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Right. So once we've got that on, I've already gone over my lips, I can tell. <laughs> so once we've got that on, we can then start laying the foundation right so foundations obviously you are going to want to find a foundation that is good for your skin type and whether that's oily dry combination whatnot i tend to find i've got combination dry patches sometimes i get a bit oily on my chin i get a lot of hormonal acne um coverage you can decide whether you want a, a lightweight or a medium buildable full it's entirely up to you whatever your preference is you can have a couple of different ones so you've got one for nights out and one for daytime um but always try and find one that's good for your skin tone because if you've got dry skin and you're using a foundation that can look quite dry then you're just going to exacerbate any skin complaints that you've already got so uh, choose wisely um i do tend to use a few different ones um not just 
variations for people's skin type. I tend to use a few different ones just to get bored. Um, you, you know, and I always like to try and see if there's anything better. Um, but a long-standing favourite of mine is the uh, MAC Studio Fix Fluid. And I love this foundation because it's so versatile. I can use it on almost any skin type. It works on oily skin. It works on dry skin. It works for um, blemishes. It's full coverage. But you can sort of make it lighter. You can mix it with moisturiser for a tinted moisturiser. You can have a sort of a medium coverage on, and build it up to be full in certain areas. It does. It is incredibly versatile. It's got SPF 15 as well, so that's good. You know, you don't want to get sunburnt on your face and sun damage isn't attractive on your skin anyway. Uh, but um, anyhow, the thing that I don't like about it is that it's £27. And nobody likes to separate themselves from £27 for a 30ml bottle of foundation. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn, which is excellent. Uh, but 27 quid is a little bit expensive for me, so I started shopping for cheaper versions. Um, these are the other ones that I use. Um, these are the Cover Effects Custom Colour Drops and these are fantastic. They've kind of got like a warming feeling when you put them on because the, the little micro pigments or whatever they are work to match your skin tone, which is fantastic. And they do do that and it's quite bizarre to watch actually because it can go on one colour and as you start to blend it in, it starts to change colour. They're fantastic. And I know that these are £30 online, but seriously, I went to the outlet, East Midlands outlet in South Normanton uh, a few weeks ago and I found them in there for £6.99 and I was gobsmacked, literally gobsmacked. I couldn't believe it. So I bought quite a few. Um, they're, these, these are great though and again versatile I can use them on most skin types another fantastic one which quite a few of my clients have actually started purchasing since I've been using it is the Ordinary Coverage Foundation and this is brilliant for coverage and it doesn't look cakey it doesn't look like you've got that full coverage you know in terms of texture on your skin because it's, it goes on so light uh, it's quite thin as well so it really does have a lovely dewy finish as well which is one of my favorite things at the moment um and i do like it for that reason and the other reason i really like it is that it's five pounds 90 or something ridiculous like that on beauty bay i think it was beauty bay anyway where i bought it from so it's absolutely dirt cheap and it's fantastic it is well worth the money so that's that one i use that a lot my newest foundation that i've added to my kit is the ex1 invisiwear i'd never heard of it um, and I'd joined the P. Louise Takeover group on Facebook, which if you're interested in makeup, I highly recommend you join in because um, there's so many talented people in there. Um, and handy tips as well, which is great, which is where I discovered this. Again, another dirt cheap one. I think it's about seven quid and I ordered this from Look Fantastic. And I bought two different shades so I can mix. Um, this one is one and this one is 10. So they're just basic numbers one being the lightest. Um, and what I like about this is it's quite thick, so you definitely get in that coverage. It's definitely full coverage, but it doesn't feel like it. When you've got it on your skin, it doesn't feel heavy and cakey, and it just goes on so smooth. Um, and you don't, you know, if you've got a lot of texture on your skin from blemishes or like acne scarring or anything like that, you expect to be able to see some texture underneath your foundation because, you know, foundation cannot cover texture. But the fact that this is so thick and creamy does even out that texture, which is absolutely incredible. And for the price, I can't go wrong. So this is my new favourite. And this is the one that I'm going to be using today. Remember, if you want to pick this up, I got it from Look Fantastic for around seven quid. So applying the foundation, what I like to do is a couple of pumps on the back of my hand. That's normally enough to begin with because um, you don't want to be putting too much on because then it is going to look thick and cakey and I use my brush and I mean I'm not entirely too pale at the moment so I'm going to add one pump of the the number 10 as well that looked like more than one pump but it wasn't because it wasn't coming out and also 
again if you've been to me before you'll know that i do this and i love doing this because it does give you that dewy finish um and it doesn't look glittery or anything like that i absolutely love these revolution liquid highlighter drops they're very similar to the iconic london drops and the difference is that these are about 10 pounds and the iconic ones are 30. so again beauty on a budget the revolution ones are phenomenal um, this colour is Liquid Starlight. I tend to go towards the sort of pinky toned one um, for my skin, but I do have another one that I can't find right now that's more of a goldy toned for, um, you know, darker skin tones. And I just pop a drop of that into the foundation, literally about that much, and then give it a, a good mix together with my brush. And like I say, it doesn't look glittery or anything like that, but it just looks really dewy. And that's what I like at the moment. Again, if you want a matte finish, you don't have to add the drops in. Um, it's the same for priming and things like that. You can use a primer that gives you a, a matte finish. If you use anything with silicon in it, like if you want a pore minimizer, like the Maybelline Baby Skin, which is very similar to the Benefit Pore Minimizer, um, I can't remember what that one's called, but I know it's by Benefit. Again, that one's expensive. This one isn't. This one contains a lot of silicon and it fills those pores in if you've got large ones on your nose, around your cheeks, etc. And that will give you more of a matte finish. You can buy a lot of mattifying primers as well, which will help with that. Uh, one that I really like at the moment, the Pixie Skin Blurring Beauty Elixir by Barry M. And it smells lovely it's like cucumbers it's really nice and that is mattifying as well and helps control oil and it does give that little bit of a skin blurring effect and make, leaves your skin feeling really nice and soft and especially if you suffer with acne and you want something that's cooling and refreshing um you know to help inflammation and things like that because i think this is slightly anti-inflammatory as well it's got hyaluronic acid in it and um, soothing cucumber extract that one's a good choice for that anyway let's get this on so i just go all over my face with the brush nothing fancy and the reason i like to apply it with a brush is because you can get in all those pores if you just go in with a beauty blender initially you're going to struggle to actually get it into the pores um assuming you have pores most people do but with the brush you can really push it in and that's what i that's what I like about applying it with the brush because you get a much more um, even finish because you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss any areas anyway. Look, I look like I've got a moustache. <laughs> Let's correct that. It's because I'm trying to be careful of this, uh, this lipstick that I've got on. I was a bit silly really putting the lipstick on, but hey ho. And then I just bring it down a little bit. You don't have to go all the way down to your chest. Unless you're going out at night and you're wearing a low cut top. And you, you're using an entirely different shade on your face. Which you really shouldn't be. But if you are, then you can take it down a little bit further. But I just like to make sure it's fully blended. Because you don't want any odd colouring on there. And that two pumps of uh, number one. And sort of, I mean it worked out about half a pump of number ten. Was enough to cover my full face and... Um, my neck as well so you don't need to go over the top with it and I just keep tapping it in so it fills in all those little pores well I say little mine are quite large and I wish there was actually a wonder product that would get rid of pores because don't believe anything that says it it, it gets rid of them because there's no way you can get rid of pores did you know pores are actually determined mostly by your genetics so if your mum's got large pores you're going to have large pores there's nothing you can do about it you just gotta just gotta live with it which is i know frustrating at times so once we've pushed all that in um then we'll go over with the beauty blender just to make it really flawless now if you need any extra coverage anywhere um, especially if you've got acne or anything like that you can go in again because it's buildable um, you can use a little bit more just to go over the areas that you need um, handy tip if you've got red inflamed acne invest in a green concealer 
collection last imperfection they do a green concealer and i do like this because it's not too drying um and if you just dab a tiny little bit over your nasty red spots green is the opposite to red on the color wheel so it cancels out that horrible redness which is a godsend uh when you've got the same as if you've got like sort of uh, red cheeks you know if you've got a bit of rosacea or you're just naturally red um Use a bit of green concealer or a green primer. Believe me, they are out there. Find a colour correcting green primer that'll take away redness. Uh, right, so then I use my beauty blender. Now the beauty blender, make sure it's damp, not wet, damp. So run it under the tap, give it a good squeeze. If you've got water, if you're squeezing it and you've got water dripping out from your hand, it's not uh, it's too wet so you need to get rid of some of that water what I like to do is run it under the tap give it a tap give it a good squeeze then chuck it into a towel and squeeze it again and that just gets rid of any of the excess water so so nice and damp and then what I like to do just to further dampen it up having just told you not to have it too damp is I like to spray a bit of setting spray on it um this one is the barry m all night long i love that range at the moment that's super good and it's cheap as well and i just spray that on because it just helps to set it and then we're just going to tap that all over the face don't rub don't go too harsh because you don't want to pull it off but you do want to tap it all over the face this little bouncing motions as the other youtubers like to say you know, I'm down with the kids. <laughs> and we go down the neck with that as well. Just until it's all blended out. Do you know, I've only just realised that I forgot to mute my telly. So, if you've been listening to a programme about serial killers, I do apologise. <laughs> Right, so once we've um, blended that out with the Beauty Blender, that's nice and, it's not looking nice and flawless. Once you've done that, we're gonna move on to concealing. So um, concealer wise, like I say, I'm absolutely loving the Barry M all night long collection at the moment. So I'm using the shades Cookie and Oatmeal, which is, Oatmeal is two, Cookie is three. Um, the Oatmeal, is the shade, I'd say probably a shade, one shade lighter than my skin tone, uh, where the cookie is my skin tone. So one shade lighter, that's what I'm gonna be using underneath my eyes and to highlight down the center of my face. The cookie is what I'm going to use to cover up any blemishes that I've got, and that is super simple. I'm just gonna pop a bit of that on the back of my hand and pick it up with the sponge just on the little pointy end and anywhere that I've got a few little imperfections that might need covering up a little bit more I'm just going to go over those yeah we all get them don't we and some people obviously worse than others I used to be terrible I used to have terrible skin when I was a teenager luckily it's calmed down a little bit but I still have really bad hormonal acne And, you know, you want to do this as gently as possible because you don't want to move it around too much. You don't want to move the foundation around and, you know, you don't want to put it on and take it straight back off in terms of the concealer. So once I've done that, that's the cookie. Get rid of that one. And now we're going to go in with the oatmeal. Again, I'm going to put this on the back of my hand. Um, two or three dips of the wand. And then I take my concealer brush. This is the MAC 252S, which I mentioned in my video last time. And um, this is the brush that I use for cut creases and concealing and things like that. Because it's a nice, round, thin, flat brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my eyes. I'm not going to go all the way up to my waterline with this because I've already done my eyes. But if you haven't and you're doing your foundation first, then you do want to go as close to your waterline as possible. Really get underneath those lashes and bring it right the way up. Um, but for me, because I've already done it, I'm just going to take it to about there. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, make a triangle, as they say. So all the way across, like that. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Just 
down the side of the nails. And then basically where you've come to down the side of the nose, we're going to join it up to the top line. And that's how you get your sort of like little triangle. Just like that. Pat as much of that in with the brush as I can. And then we're going to go in with the blender and this time i'm going to use the tiny the teeny tiny little one give it a spritz of setting spray and i'm going to blend that out right got a little little bit more concealer on the back of my hand there and now we're going to finish off the highlighting, which is just going to be on the highest points of the face. So I'm going to make a little triangle on the forehead, just like that, that comes down sort of in between the brows. Run it down the length of the nose on the cupid's bow. I was trying to get of that lipstick again. And then on the chin like so that's the highest points highest points of your face and the reason we went all across with that concealer is because of your cheekbones obviously that's the other highest point of your face again beauty blender i like to use a little one for this just because it's a little bit more precise than going in with the sort of massive big mama Once that's all blended out, we're going to go ahead and set those areas that we've just concealed. Uh, setting powder. I love this one. This is the RCM. Oh, do you know something? I can't talk. Uh, the RCMA No Colour Powder. And um, I like it. It's really fine and it really helps get into those creases and fill them up. Fill up the wrinkles, which is always good. And I'm going to take that on a... A tiny, teeny tiny beauty blender, which is even smaller than the other one. Um, I'm just going to go back in first with the beauty blender just to make sure there's no creases. You want to try and catch it quickly. So one at a time. Make sure there's no creases. Going to dip in with that powder, into that powder with the beauty blender. And onto the area we've just concealed. And you're going to put quite a bit on there. Everyone's thinking now, what on earth is she doing? I assure you it's legitimate. This is what they call baking. So we get quite a bit of powder on there, all over that area that we've just concealed. And same on the other side, back in with the Beauty Blender just to make sure there's no creases. And then get that powder on there. Right, and anywhere else that you get particularly oily, so for me, that's normally around my, my chin here. I like to just bake that as well. I like to put quite a sufficient amount of powder. Also, I find that my nose, the foundation will always pull off my nose quicker than anywhere else. And that's because you've got less flesh on your nose. I like to set that as well. I like to bake it. Um, and I tend to get quite a few wrinkly bits on my forehead that you, luckily you can't see really on this video, but I assure you I can see them in the flesh and they drive me insane. Uh, and I just like to push the powder into those as well. because It stops the foundation and concealer from sitting in them and looking silly. Right. Once we've done that, I take my powder brush. This is the Peaches Makeup uh, PCO4, um, Peaches and Cream. I, I love this powder brush, it's 
the peaches makeup brushes are fantastic and they are really cheap as well so have a look on their website and i'm just going to dip that into my powder and set the rest of my face just be careful of those bits that we've just baked because we're not quite ready to take that off and of course you put the foundation on the neck as well so that's only right that it should be set And once we've gone over the entire face with the powder, I'm just going to brush off some of this area that we've um, baked, like the chin. Just going to sweep it off, not too harshly. You, you don't want to be pressing the skin, you're just kind of like flicking it off. And I do like to take a smaller brush. This again is Peaches Makeup. This is the highlight brush and it's PC17. Um, I just like to use that under the eye because it's I can I've got a bit more control over it than I have the huge powder brush. There we go. Once we've got rid of that powder, I'm going to go back in with my Beauty Blender. I'm not going to spray any more setting spray on it. It's just damp, just like it was before. And what this will do is just help to pick up any of the excess powder that's still on the skin because you don't want to look um, powdery, dusty. Um, so we'll go in with this. And I just do it. I just do it for about 30 seconds under each eye. So it really pushes that powder down. It just blends everything together and it stops it from looking powdery and cakey. We go all over the skin with that, particularly under the eyes because that's where we put the most powder. And there we go, once we've done that, I'm going to set it with my spray. And what that spray does I know that we haven't put any other products on, but what the spray does is just really helps everything to mush together. It just blends everything together. And I like to do it in between steps because it does, I, I tend to find it helps everything blend a lot better than when you just do it at the end. Um, this is something I've recently discovered. Just a little spritz of that. Give it a wave. <laughs> Right, so once we've got that dry, we're going to start doing the colouring in with the blush and the bronzer. I'm going to do bronzing first and the ones I'm going to use today are the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Give Me Sun and Dark Deepest. One is slightly darker than the other. The Dark Deepest is a little bit darker than the Give Me Sun. Um, and the reason I like to use two is because I get the all over glow with one and then I go in just to sort of like sharpen the contour with the darker one. Um, I get some people like to do a cream contour. I don't particularly, I think that can be quite heavy and I think I gen generally find that powder is enough for what most people want. It's certainly enough for what I want anyway. But you can do a cream contour and if you want to see that in another video then let me know and we'll go through it. Um, so I'm going to go in first with the Give Me Sun, the brush I'm using, it's just a small blush brush and this is out the Candy Cosmetics 10 piece marble set, My, those brushes are awesome, I really do like them, take a look at their website. Um, I'm just going to give it a little dip into the Give Me Sun bronzer, tap off any excess and I'm just going to start on the cheeks where the where you can sort of see where the cheekbone is. If you have a problem telling where yours are, then you can do the whole fish trick and suck in, and then you'll be able to see where your natural line is. I can kind of see mine anyway. So I'm just gonna to stick to that natural line, just backwards and forwards, just to get the color on there on both sides. And once we've got that on, I'm going to do very gentle, upwards, circular, swirly motions. I'm going to not go any lower than this line. We're just swirling up. We're blending 
up. I've not added any extra product onto the brush for the blending. We're just using what we've just applied. We don't want it to be too heavy because that's what we're going to do uh, with the darker bronzer is to increase the contour. This is just to give you an all, a nice all over glow. So back in and we're going to go around the head. Um, a good tip with head contouring is, is the three finger tip. OK, so you take these three fingers and you go from your eyebrows. If you've got space above the top finger, go ahead and contour your forehead. If you haven't and your forehead isn't as large as three fingers, do not contour because it's going to shrink your head even further. If on the other side of the spectrum, you've got an absolutely humongous forehead, then contour it away. You have my permission. So we're just going to go starting from sort of like the tail end of the brow, the bottom of it, where your temple is. Going to bring it all the way around the edge just the edge of the hairline over onto the other side and then i like to bring it in just a bit over the brow just to blend it and then onto the jawline i literally go the right the, the entire length of the jaw i go all around you want to go on the jaw bone as well, where you can feel the bone there. You're going directly over that, so it's kind of like half onto the face and half onto the, the neck. If you've got a delightful double chin as well, which everyone has a double chin, you can put plenty of bronzer on that to disguise it. Obviously, don't go too heavy. You don't want an orange double chin. <laughs> I know it probably looks like a little bit of a sloppy application, but trust me, it isn't. The more vigorous I tend to be with the blending, the better it blends out for some bizarre reason. So now I'm going to go in and darken the contour with the Dark Deepest uh, MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Powder. It's just slightly darker than the Give Me Sun. It's going to take a bit of that on my brush. And where you can see where the, the, the contour is there, obviously I've blended out the first colour. I'm just going to go in again with a darker colour. I'm not going to bring it all the way down like we did before. I'm just going to concentrate it more towards the, the hairline and the first part of the cheekbone. And same on the other side. And once we've applied that, we're just going to blend that out again so we're blending upwards never downwards and then what you can do if you feel that line is a little bit too harsh is just to go backwards and forwards over it and that'll help blend the edges out And if you feel like you've put far too much colour on, you can go in with your powder brush. Don't put any extra powder on it. Just the one that you used to powder your face earlier and go over that contour. I mean, I don't particularly need to, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you. And you can go back over that contour that you've just done. Blend it out a little bit more and it'll just soften it a bit. So back in with the darker shade and just a little bit around the jaw, just to deepen it up. Again, if you've got that double chin, a bit more on there bit more around the hairline, just sticking quite close to the hairline at that. We're not really blending that out because we don't want it too dark. And blend it out a little bit with the powder brush there. And that's that. That's my contouring. Um, I do like to do a nose contour as well, but I don't use these colours for that because I tend to find they're a little bit orangey for a nose contour. A nose contour wants to look quite natural. And the best one that I have at the moment, and it's actually pretty cheap, 
is the Revolution Contour and Glow Palette. And I think I got it free when I spent X amount of money at Superdrug. Um, it's got a couple of different shades of highlighter, which I don't like, so quite glittery. And then it's got two shades um, of bronzer and you can clearly see which one I use the most because the pan is nearly empty. Um, but it's, qu it's quite a light, uh, not too orangey bronzer. And I just use... Uh, medium sized fluffy blender this one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Anastasia Beverly Hills um, brush that I got with the modern renaissance palette and it's actually a really good brush it comes in useful and I use it all the time I'm just going to take a bit of that lighter shade on there don't need anything fancy we don't need a small pointy brush or anything like that just a medium fluffy blender I'm going to go down either side of the nose with that So right up into the brow and right down to the tip. Make sure it's blended out. And then underneath the tip of the nose as well. And if you feel that you need a slightly darker uh, contour, like I do at the moment, I just use a little bit of the darker shade. Just a, a small bit, just to exaggerate that contour a little bit. Most of the time, the lighter shade is gener gem generally enough for most people. Um, but if you like me, you like it a little bit heavier, then you can use a little bit of a darker shade. Like I say, it's nothing fancy. I literally just go up and down either side of the nose and it, it, that's what works best for me. There are lots of different techniques you can see, but I mean, I don't know whether you can tell instantly, it sort of thins my nose out and gets rid of this. Um, well, it doesn't get rid of it entirely, but it thins down the huge bulbous part of my nose that I absolutely cannot stand. Um, there are different techniques where you can sort of like cut it and, well, cut it with the bronzer, obviously, um, cut it and have all these crazy things but I don't I don't faff about with any of that I just up and down either side it works the best for me and then what I like to do as well sort of mix the two shades together there and I like to go under the lip and that just plumps up your lip your bottom lip a little bit more you don't want to go too heavy otherwise it'll look like you've got a bit of a beard <laughs> just a little bit under there blend that out right so that's the contouring done with so this this is the Barry M blusher palette and I I do rate this because I don't use a lot of blusher uh, I do use it every single time though and so you should a lot of people don't but you you genuinely should because it lifts your face it stops you from looking Barbie-ish gives you a bit of colour back in and again you can tell which one I use the most and it's, it's this, this like peachy shimmery one here which seems to be my favourite but all the others are fantastic it's just this this seems to see, suit most skin tones the best and I just sort of dip it in tap off the excess and what you want to do is you want to smile and see the apples of your cheeks and then go ahead and just tap it on the just the apples And then once I've got it on there and I've got the product off the brush with whatever's left on it, I'm just going to bring it out in soft, swirly motions. Just to blend it into that contour. And it just kind of livens up your face a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it again with the spray just to melt everything together and then we can go in with the highlighter which is my favorite bit so quick spritz of this just to blend it together go back in with my little eyelash palette i really am going to look at fans on ebay later once that's dried off a little bit, we can now go in with the highlighter. My favourite one at the moment is the Doll Beauty Doll Light. And this one is the lightest one. It's like a diamond. And it literally is like a diamond. I absolutely flipping love it. 
uh, they do different shades though if you've got darker skin than i have and um, they've got a bronzier shade there are different ones available but usually i find they're a bit too glittery for me whereas this one does give you that glassy skin there's no glitter there's none no glitter at all it's lovely it's really glassy and sleek and not glittery at all <laughs> and what i like to do is i use my uh, big fluffy mac blender this is the 224 uh, to do the cheekbones and dip that in okay nice amount of that we do like a highlight well i do anyway and because the, the skin is slightly damp from the setting spray it really does set it off and you can already see when you look in the mirror what what or what not whatever you do and you can already see where that highlight is supposed to go on top of your cheekbones and it's kind of like a a c shape if you were to bring it around the top which is what we're going to do over the top of the brow there into that c shape just like that And then once we've got the ha the highlight off the brush, we can start blending it out in your little swirly motions, just so there's no harsh edges. And I do like to take it right to the front of the brow and just give it a little bit. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I do, I do like the whole glassy skin thing. And I find that bringing it right to the front of the brow gives you that. And I like to smile as well, just to get that lovely dot of it there on the apples of my cheeks because they're quite full. So if you have the same, then it's a lovely idea to do that. But you don't have to. And you don't have to apply as much as I'm doing. I just really love the stuff. And I like to look like the Tin Man. <laughs> I appreciate that some people don't know. I love it. So you can just use a little bit. But again, try and do it in the C shape because it really does help that whole area stand out. And again, on the other side going to go in with that c shape just to get the product off the brush and then once we've done that we can start blending it out again in the little swirly motions And then once we've got that on, I just like to blend it into the bronzer with my contouring brush, just so everything's seamless. And then for the rest of the areas, I like to use the shorter end of this ABH brush. Um, it's quite stubby and stiff and I like it for that reason. I'm just gonna go all the way down the nose sort of finishing where the tip is there and then blend it out with my finger very gently and then the actual tip and then cupid's bow And you have those two little lines in between your nose and your top lip. And I just like to gently go over those two little lines as well. And then I go back in with my MAC 224. And just a little bit on the chin. Not too much because you don't want to look oily. And I do, I do regularly go back in with my contour and my powder brush just to even it all out, just to balance it all out and stop it from looking too much. You know, like I say, you don't want to look oily. You just want your skin to be glowy. And then once we've done that, another spritz with a setting spray. Give it a good one this time. And that's that. And I'm just going to nip off camera and 
just touch up my lips and my eyes real quick and then I can show you the finished look. And there we go, there's the finished look. Um, super, super glassy on the old highlighter there. And like I say, if you don't like to wear that that amount, uh, that much highlighter, then that's your prerogative. That's absolutely fine. This is just my personal preference and I do love it. So I do put quite a lot on. Um, so I hope you're all happy with that. And I hope you've enjoyed watching today. Um, I have no idea what to do next. I, I do not know what you want to see next. So it would be really great if you could let me know what you want. Do you want some eye looks? Do you want smoky, daytime, natural eye looks? I don't know. What do you guys want? Do you want to see anything more about skincare or, you know, cream contouring, anything like that, fitting false lashes? I don't know. You let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see next and then I can put another video together for you guys. Um, I posted the flash sale last night for this Friday. Obviously, this video is going out tonight, which is Wednesday. Um, on Friday, it's the last day of the longest month ever of January. Um, so I've crushed my prices to £20 for a full face, including lashes. So... Take advantage of that offer while you can. If you've got any plans for Friday, come and see me. I have 10 till 8 p.m. available. Slots are about two hours. Um, can take between one to two hours. So make sure you leave yourself plenty of time. Drop me an inbox if you want to book um, deposits of £10 via PayPal or bank transfer and the other £10 payable on the day. Uh, keep a lookout for the raffle. That's coming up towards Valentine's Day, as I said. Um, and that's all for now. And uh, I shall see you soon. Bye.